Hey guys, for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create templates out of your 3D models. So really the goal here today is to take a look at these two cubes and show you how you can, you know, unfold these objects into flat 2D profiles and then uh, get them set up so that you can print those out and make physical versions uh, using Illustrator. Okay, so we'll, this will be part one of probably a two part series that looks then afterwards at some common issues and problems with unfolding and making templates, but this will be the one where everything works. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So you'll see here, I have two different cubes. It's because I want to show you two different things or, or, or really what to expect. Uh, and what happens when you don't get what you expect, okay? So we're going to actually grab both of these cubes and move them away from our zero, zero point, because you'll see that's where things get moved to when you uh, use the unroll command, okay? So the first thing to, to, to note here is that um, when, as you start, or if you want to unroll a poly surface, the first thing you have to make sure is that it's all a single solid uh, poly surface, right? So all of those faces have to be joined together. So first thing first, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and type explode here. Okay. So let's say you've made your, your poly surface, but you haven't joined it. You'll have things that look like this with every face being separate. Okay. So the first thing you would want to do is again, highlight all of them, select, and then type join. Okay. Now, if you do that correctly, you'll see that you have everything joined into one unit. If for some reason certain elements are not joined together, it will probably mean that for some reason those surfaces are not tangent to each other, right? So they don't share the same boundary. Um, if that happens, then you, that object won't join. So I'm going to go ahead and explode this and show you what, what that might look like, right? So if I take this, this surface and I'm going to scale that surface, and I'm going to scale it from here. I'm going to make it just a, let's make it just a little bit bigger. So let me actually grab it again. I'm going to grab it here at the bottom end, and I'm just going to make it that much bigger, right? So almost, I mean, it, it is noticeable, but almost not noticeable, right? So I'm going to move this. Okay. Now, if I grab everything here again, and I go and type join, you'll see uh, in this case, it did join it because we, it does share one face. Okay. But if I explode it, and for some reason, I move this vertically, you know, like that, right? And now I go to join everything you'll see that that face doesn't join, right? So this is an exaggerated version, but if you're having any problems with things not joining, it's probably because of something like that, okay? So, okay, so, but now let's assume that you have a fully enclosed object. You want to have a fully enclosed object, um, the easiest way to make a 2D template is to use the command unroll surface. So unroll surface. You'll see that when you select that and you have your object selected, you'll get a couple of options here. I always select to not explode it. So click no, right? And I don't use labels, but you're more than welcome to change it so that you do get labels. That means that each of the pieces will be numbered, okay? So uh, then if I click enter again, you'll see that my cube has now been unrolled. Into, um, into an object, okay? So that's fairly easy. A cube is fairly easy to unroll. And basically what the unroll command does in a, in a weird way is it, and I'll show you here what it does, but it essentially just starts to rotate the face, like the, each individual face uh, three-dimensionally to put it onto the ground plane, right? So basically it does that. Right, and but it does that with all of the pieces, right? So that's uh, something important to, to really understand the basic principle of the unroll command. 
Now, as you can also tell, there's many different ways to unroll a cube. And, you know, Rhino will just kind of essentially choose a random um, way to unroll it. So in this case, it has unrolled it as such, but, you know, um, it could have also unrolled it so that this was the bottom and then there were four leaves coming out of it and one extra for the top, right? So you don't get to choose when you do the unroll command how it unrolls it, but, uh, but you can rest assured that it does unroll it. And in the next tutorial, we'll talk a little bit about what happens with mirroring, right? And, and I'll explain that um, in more detail then, but just be aware that potentially when, it, when Rhino unrolls, it could create the mirror of an object, not the object itself, okay? All right, so there's, there's that unrolled cube. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move it over. And we'll talk about how to make that template here in just a second. But now I'm going to unroll this one. So I'm going to type unroll, press enter, and see, you'll see it also unrolled it, but it has a minor problem, right? And that is that all the pieces, or well, not all, but certain pieces are sitting on top of each other. Now, if you look at this object, and I chose it specifically for this reason, you'll see that this object has kind of inset cuts, right? So it has all these surfaces that fold into the, let's say the overall volume of the object, right? So it is in other words, concave, right? So concave object, when you unroll them because of the process of unfolding them, the pieces will end up lying on top of each other, okay? So that's an important thing to know. So what you have to do to this, you'll see that these are grouped together because we have the explode uh, option not selected for the unroll, right? So now when we have it like that, then we would have to go in and type explode. And now we can actually grab these pieces and move them off to a side. And you'll see, right? So we can very quickly start making sense of, uh, of what is happening, right? And um, in this case, you can see here, we might want, and you'll have to, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but you might want to start thinking about the logic of how this object goes back together when you take these templates and decide where to put those extra pieces. Um, you can put them tangent to something else, or you can go ahead and move them separate uh, so that it's a little bit easier to handle, right? But that hopefully helps you, gives you a sense of, for example, I can assume that somehow these are gonna be related um, and maybe not exactly like this, but in some version of that. And so maybe I'll put them all over there uh, and see how, see how I can make it work. Okay, so there you go. Now we have our, our objects ready or our, our, our surfaces ready to make templates. Now, these are not the templates just yet. And it's important that for the next day, you make one, one very important, and I will say this again, it is crucial that you remember this. And that is that we have to switch our camera, okay? So we have to go from looking at these things in perspective, if we wanna actually make sure that our templates, when we print them out, are proportionally correct, we have to switch from perspective and go here and make this set view, if it's not already a top view and go to the top view, okay? So we want to make sure that we're looking at these objects from the top down to make sure that we are seeing the correct uh, proportional object, okay? So you'll see this one has already exploded because I had this problem. This one I have not. So I'm gonna show you what happens if you do try to make your, your 2D templates with exploded and non-exploded objects, okay? So just another important reminder. So now I'm looking at things from top down and I'm gonna select this object, which I have not exploded, right? And now I'm gonna make the 2D drawing file. So if I type make 2D, press enter, it's gonna ask me a couple questions. I don't actually have to change anything. You just type okay. And you'll see, and for some reason, make 2D always places things elsewhere, but you can zoom out. But you'll see that it now made a 2D cut file. So this is just vector line work now of this view, 
of this object. Okay, but you, as you notice, we're missing all those interior lines, right? These would all be the fold lines for making that cube. The reason why it's missing those lines is because this object was all joined together, right? So what's really important is that before you do that, you actually grab that object, before you have make 2D, you grab the object and you type explode, okay? And now we have it all as individual units, right? And so now I can grab it all and again, type make 2D, hit okay, and back there. And we'll see now we have that sort of template that shows all of our line work. Okay, so again, I can do that thing with this one over here, which has already been exploded, make 2D, press OK, and you'll see that uh, it makes it. Okay, now, in really important things about make 2D here to just remember also is that we, as we made this uh, 2D, we have always kept all the objects have stayed proportionately the same and to the same scale. Okay, so whatever scale I was working in in the 3D model, let's say, let's take a look here, and I was working in inches, and I believe that this was one foot, right? So 12 inches by 12 inches, okay? So that's, the, that's, where, our, that's where our cubes, when it unrolls, it keeps it the same size, right? So 12 by 12. So when I make 2D from top view, again, now I have templates that are the same size as this. So now if I go ahead and I print these um, to scale, then I will be able to make a one foot cube out of paper. Okay, so here's uh, now we're on to the next step. Now, once we have all of our line work, we're going to select it. And now we're going to go to file, export, select it here, right? The option that says export selected so you don't export everything else. And we're going to save this. And you have various different options. My recommendation is that you save these things as DWGs, okay? Uh, I, I have to find it here in just a second. Sometimes, here we go, AutoCAD DWG. You can also, uh, we're actually gonna take it into Illustrator. So you could also save it as an Illustrator file. Sometimes that does weird things to uh, splines or uh, any kind of curved um, line. Right, so, so usually AutoCAD is better at preserving correct curvature. So that's why I tend to prefer it. So I'm gonna choose uh, DWG and I'm gonna save it. In this case, I'm just gonna save it to the desktop here. I'm gonna save it as template one, save. Okay, and here you're gonna be asked to look at a few options. So again, here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and down and choose R12 natural. It's uh, the one that works usually the best. You can stick with default. You can try any one of these. You'll have slightly different results. This R12 usually tends to work uh, pretty well. Okay, so I'm going to select OK here. And now that's been successfully saved. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and open Illustrator and just briefly go over what to do to make sure that you're, uh, when you bring in that file, you bring it at the correct one to one scale. Okay, so as this is opening, I'm going to go back to Rhino here. And I'm going to show you here, just remember one brief important thing here. And that is that uh, whatever units you are using here, you want to use the same units elsewhere. So before I do anything, I'm going to look at my units here. And I see that in units, I was working in inches. OK, so that's really important. Okay, so now that I know that I've saved my Rhino file in inches now, and now I have the Illustrator open, I'm actually gonna now go into Illustrator, go to File, Open, and I'm gonna go to Desktop where we save this, and I'm gonna go and find that DWG, which is template one right here, right? Now I'm gonna click Open. Now you'll see that you'll get this little dialog box which asks you what scale you wanna bring things in. And it's already set here, as you can see, to the scale be one to one in inches, right? So that's really important. Those have to all align. 
Now, let's say that this is something else. You, the first thing that you'll want to want to do here is if this says something else, it says points, for example, you'll want to make sure first you switch it to the correct um, set of information, right? So I'll select inches, right? Except the correct unit, we would call it actually, right? And then that you go one to one. Once that it's all set, then I'm going to click OK. And you'll see here that my templates have come in at the correct scale. Now, my here, my um, artboard is very small, and these are going to be things that are very large because of this, right? But at least I know that I brought them in at the correct scale, right? And then from here, you could you could do other things. You could decide to scale these a certain percentage. We we'll go to object, trans transform, scale. And let's say, you know, I would make it one over 12. Go OK. And now I have made them much, much smaller, right? Uh, or you can choose anything you want, right? So make sure to, uh, to bring things at scale. And then if you want to make any modifications to that scale, make that modification to the scale in Illustrator. That way you know exactly what change in scale you have uh, selected. Okay, so there you go. That's how you can take 3D objects, make 2D templates, and then bring those 2D templates into Illustrator so that you can print from Illustrator and then recreate that object in real life. All right, see you guys in the next one.